video on the uh, IRS install on the Fox body. I know there's already some out there, but um, I saw a couple ways to make things maybe a little bit easier. This particular car, he did not want to weld uh, these on there. On my car, I welded them on there, um, but I did put the welds where if I wanted to remove it, um, it could be easily cut out. Like I just put the welds like here, I think, and then like one here. And then I bolted one of them down and then, um, I don't remember what I did here, but I think I welded these two on the edge. Um, so yeah, uh, this one, he did not want to weld it at all. So that's fine with me. I made these little plates. Um, this one was, uh, I used the same one on both sides and then I just flipped it and it worked perfectly. So, um, this isn't the one I'm going to use. This is just what I'm using to mock it up and I'll leave this one so I could use it for my car and any other IRS cars I do in the future. Um, I'll make another one pretty much identical to this one and then I'll, uh, weld it all the way around. Um, so yeah, this is going to go where these typically go. When you have your, ah, when you have your IRS, then you will see how it goes. This part here will go in here and then you bolt it down, obviously. Um, everybody says you can use this, uh, quad shock mounting bolt location. And I had said that as well. But one thing I noticed is um, they never thread in correctly. It's the same thread pitch as the drive shaft bolt. So for example, if you have a drive shaft bolt, which I have right here, it will thread into there, but then it gets hard right away. On this one here, uh, just so I can line up the bracket correctly to cut the bottom, and I'll show you guys that right now. Uh, I just drill out where the uh, quad shock bolts typically go. Here's one right here. Oh, see, I could just show you guys on this one, stupid ass me. Let's see if you could tell. Okay, so you see how there's, yeah, three threaded um, holes that you can tell are used, or three uh, threads on there, that you could tell have been used, and then those two or three back there, you can tell they've never been used because they're a completely different color. So what happens is it reduces the size uh, for whatever reason, or it gets more narrow. You can argue that it's to kind of lock it, you know, to kind of lock it in place or whatever, but if you keep trying to thread a bolt into there, it, it is gonna strip it out. Um, so yeah, what I did is uh, I line it up, I drill another hole on top of it, that way I could use both uh, mounting holes on the IRS bracket. One of them will go here, one of them will go here, that's it right here, here and here. And I'll show you what I put in there for uh, to you know turn them into threaded holes right now. In order to keep the bolts the same size all around, cause I wanna, I could've used smaller bolts and then just, um, uh, the nut would have fit in there right away. So on this, this is basically the same hole as this. These two were the same. And I drilled this one out. Uh, I use a, like a, what's it called? A step drill to drill it out. Um, or I'll just use whatever drill, but drill it all the way through. And then I'll use a step drill until I get the right size that I want. Cause I want it to be kind of snug in there. Uh, this is double layer. And then it has that threaded piece on there. That's just kind of like tack welded behind it. You can see where it's, uh, has a little spot welds in there. Here's one here. Here's one here. You can kind of see the little dimples in there. So that holds that little that little double layer that's back there. Um, when I, oh, where'd it go? This one here. When I cut out the bottom piece, see it's double layered. It's uh, a lot thinner than what I'm what I am using, but um, I'm using a piece that's thicker than both of these put together. So I don't want to hear it. Oh, you're cutting a piece out of the frame. You're altering the frame. You're changing the you're you know altering the rigidity of the frame. None of that shit, man. Come on, knock it off. It's not gonna make a big difference. It's not gonna be enough to make a difference at all. I'll make my own plate for it, which is gonna be a lot thicker. It's not gonna be double layered like this, two thin uh, pieces. And then um, I'll lay it up in there and it'll have the threaded holes, which is basically uh, this piece here. That's this piece here, this bracket here. See, it's a lot thicker. Now there's a certain way you should cut it. That way it just kind of slides right, in, right into place. And then, um, it'll be way easier. I mean, yeah, of course, get your measurements right, but basically you're just going off of the bracket. Who cares about the measurements? All of these Fox bodies are not the same. They're not all identical. You could take measurements from here to here and see uh, the gap from the center bolt hole here and then to, the, to let's say this, for example. They're all gonna be different. No Fox body is the same. Um, you know, they're, they're built on an assembly line. They're not made by, ro they weren't made by robots back in the day, so. They're not all perfectly uh, identical. They're not. It's just, let's just be real. So 
what you want to do is just put your bracket in there and then um you know work around that so here let me show you guys how it'll go so yeah obviously the um i just weld those nuts to this uh thick metal plate and then luckily i got it right on the money so cut it out and it'll go like this kind of hard to do with one hand there we go so yeah, it will sit flush right there. Uh, where's it? Right there. Gotta push it in a little bit as I'll weld this plate to the uh, frame here. I'll weld the plate onto that, bam. Look at that line, it's even straight right there, look at that. Well, once I weld it in, that's what I wanna go based off of. And then when I cut it, I kinda cut up a little bit after the, uh, up on the side of it, I'll cut it in a little bit deeper there, and then I won't cut all the way back on the uh, back part. I'll get some better uh, video of that on the other side once I weld it in. And then this part, we'll, we'll have that threaded nut go on the uh, on there, and then um, same thing with that one, I replaced it anyway. Normally people just put the two bottom holes in it, and then uh, that one quad shock one that's in here, but I've been using this. I did this on the other side as well. I'll, I'll fill up that hole right there. Um, I'll fill that hole here. I'll weld it all up in there. I'll make it whatever. Anyway, um, this is where the existing quad shock uh, threaded bolt hole is already on the Fox body. But like I said, uh, I believe the size reduces afterwards after like, you know, two or three threads. Um, and then I added, uh, no, this hole is already there, ma'am. So rather than adding holes there, I put one right here. I showed you that. So these will go in there. So this is the bracket here. Um, it's gonna line up like this. That hole will line up there with that one, bam. Then you'll have somewhere to bolt that up. And then this one will obviously line up with this one here. With this one there. Then you can use both of those. Now underneath it, I already cut that hole out there. I'll show you guys what I do with that. So what I did with these holes is, this one was the quad shock. Uh, both of these were for the quad shock uh, mounting bracket. Um, I just drilled this hole out bigger. And this one, I added the hole. It didn't have a hole at all. This one obviously doesn't line up, so we just ignore that one. We're gonna cover this up. Um, don't worry about making these cuts perfect. We're gonna fill all that in and then grind it down smooth. Um, <clears throat> what I did is I saved the pieces that I cut out just in case I'm able to reuse them, at least to fill it in a little bit. This one here, I just cut this, so I'm not gonna, you know, it'll probably boop, fit in there. If not, I could grind down a little bit, make it fit in there, and then just fill the holes. If not, then I'll just fill it all the way in, sand it down, or grind it down, and uh, make sure it's smooth. Now, underneath, the plate underneath is gonna take this one here. Here's the plate that I made for that one. Um, this is just my, my copy plate right here. This is the one I'm keeping. Uh, that way, whenever I do this in the future, I won't have to take measurements and all that good stuff. Um, but this is pretty much an example of it. I just made this one, uh, like I said, to, to keep this one as a copy. So what I'll do is um, I'll make one exactly like this and then it'll fit perfectly up in here. It'll line up into position there. Ma'am, you weld it in, put some little spot welds on there, tack welds on there, and you weld it in place. That'll have the threaded holes for it right here. Bam, you'll weld that in place and there you go. You'll be able to fully bolt on the uh, IRS bracket without having to weld this. So now if you don't want to run IRS or for whatever reason you didn't want to weld this bracket onto your uh, car for the IRS, then you can remove this obviously this will all look way better and then um you can just go back to a solid rear if that's what you want to do main thing the best tip i could give you is clean grind this down clean as much as you can get it down to the bare metal as best as you can and since i removed this layer because like i said it's double layered this thing right here um this plate back here that's behind this that was already there i cut this hole out right here bam you cut that out you could cut it out bigger if you want but i cut this hole out right here with the cutoff wheel and it's just, um, it's like double layered. For example, you get one of these, I put it on the uh, bench grinder thing and then I kind of round it off. Boop. Or if you could drill a hole big enough to make it fit in there, bam, and then I pop the nut in there. Then uh, this flange here, hopefully it focuses. The flange here is resting on that second layer right there. Boom, it's resting on there. You pop it in there like that, bam, it's resting on there. So the thickness of this here, of the flange on the nut, um, it's gonna sit flush because you cut this extra layer off. So now that you cut that extra layer off, you put the nut in there, boop, and it's gonna sit flush. You would think like, oh, well, this is gonna, you know, pop out further than the frame, but no, it won't. 
It's gonna sit flush with it. It's fairly thick. P pop it in there, it'll sit flush, and then you can either fill this uh, empty space out, or you can save your little pieces that you cut out. This is the way I'm gonna do it. Um, again, I don't think it's gonna have any issues with it at all. The material that they that is used here is a lot thinner than this, so it'll even be better. When you're welding these on, make sure that you uh, make sure that you uh, tighten them down. Like put the put the bolt through there and put the nut on there, and then tighten it down. This one I made it like a little bit more of an oval to give it space to kind of, if you need to. So it'll go like this. Bam, see, it don't have enough room to kind of, you know, if you want to slide it back and forth, whatever. Plus, I'm holding it with one hand. But anyway, yeah, I don't have enough room to slide back and forth. Put this in position right there, bam, you bolt that on, and everything will line up perfectly fine. Um, yeah, I'll show you guys uh, once I fill this all in there, show you guys what I mean. But anyway, what I did is I drilled holes um, where the bracket was going to go. I drilled the holes there with a like a step drill. Let's see if I have it laying around somewhere. I don't. And then what I did is I put the nut in there, nut with the flange on it. I set it in there enough to where it would just clear the nut and then the flange would be on the outside. And it would kind of, um, since it's double layer, I would only cut out with the, uh, with the cutoff wheel. I cut a square out. And I basically only took off the um, that first layer since it's like double layered in here. I took off that first layer and then with the flange, uh, the nut sitting there, the flange would be the only thing that would be holding the nut from, you know, sliding all the way through. Um, the flange would be the same thickness as the uh, second layer. So it would be really easy to just weld the outside, boop, weld the outside, weld it on the outside and then uh, grind it down. And it would literally sit flush. As you can see, I didn't use no filler or nothing. This is all just welding and then grinding down. Uh, basically, it'll use all four mounting uh, mounting holes like it would on a uh, factory IRS setup, Cobra or whatever. So I'll use, I used uh, these two as well as uh, the one here and the one here. Um, so that's like that. Man, this one goes here. There's that. And then... Um, this one. So uh, I did the whole Dell rim bushing kit. One thing I'm gonna tell you guys is 100% make sure you buy all of the uh, bushing removal tools and install bushing tools, whatever. The same tool you use to remove it is gonna be the same one you use to install it. So that will make a huge difference. It'll make it way, way easier um, as opposed to burning them and doing, you know, drilling them out. I didn't have to drill anything out. I didn't have to burn anything out, nothing. Everything just slid right out. Um, on some on some of them i did use a torch like to you know i torture from the outside or whatever let's say for example this one i torture from the outside because you do need to keep the shell in there the shell which is this lip right here and then you'll see the lip here too that's the shell that's where the um the the rubber bushing slides in there so the delrin bushing will go in there obviously and then uh you'll have the little sleeves that go in there too i did every single bushing on it he got the whole kit like the most expensive kit that they have with all the tools and stuff so honestly i think it's worth it because um you can't put a price on on you know spending hours on one bushing which i did see videos where people said they took hella long taking this bushing out for example it took me no more than i don't know three minutes or so to pop it out with the with the uh with the correct tool and then it has new hubs with the extended studs and stuff and that's it i'm gonna pop it back in place i'm gonna weld on the subframe connector still and um yeah let me put on this bracket and i'll show you guys how it goes on so there it is. All four uh, mounting locations are being used. So uh, if you ever want to go back to a uh, solid rear, then you just unbolt this bracket and that's it really. Um, I don't see why you would after modifying everything like this, but just in case you ever want to. Putting the IRS in is actually easier than putting in a solid rear. Get a jack underneath it, jack it up, slide these in there. That's it. Or uh, slide that one in first, put the bolt through there, and then these will just slide right in. That's it.